what's going on you guys welcome back to the channel just got off of work and made it over to the shop uh, it's only about five minutes away from my work so it makes it super convenient to pop over here um, after work and get some stuff done on the car so in the last video I started mounting the radiator and I don't think that it's gonna work out um, I'm gonna go with another game plan on it and let me show you guys what I mean all right so this is where the uh, radiator is currently sitting um, how I mounted it before, but I think what I need to do is unmount it from its current location and mount it in the uh, basically the spare wheel compartment down here and it'll lay nice and flat and what I can do uh, once I have it mounted down there is I can lay a piece of aluminum sheet over it and uh, rivet it in or screw it in and then create ducts because um, like I said I'm gonna do lex hand windows with some uh, some scoops um, for like air intake and I can run them down and then uh, create like a little uh, shroud off of that piece of aluminum that funnels air into that uh, pocket down there. Um, I think it's just going to come out cleaner and uh, unfortunately that's how these type of things go sometimes. Usually your first idea isn't your best idea and it's going to be a couple steps backwards but I think it's the uh, right thing to do and the end product is going to come out that much better. So let's get this thing taken out of here and then mount it in the bottom of the trunk. Oh, and by flipping it, I can uh, cut out a hole in the bottom there and the air that's getting sucked through the radiator from the fan will go straight out the bottom of the trunk and uh, behind the car. So much better idea all around and uh, let's get going on it. made some pretty good progress and uh, let's walk around to the front here got the uh, turbo looking water pump installed in the front there this is a Davy Craig or Davis Craig or Craig Davy I don't I don't know it's uh, supposedly a really good water pump um, and I was initially gonna mount it in the back but uh, my buddy said that these actually push better than they pull so my thought was to push water or push coolant to the back of the car as opposed to mounting it back there and having it push forward or try to like suck suck it forward suck it um, but yeah I got it mounted up and pretty happy with its location I'll still be able to fit the intercooler piping um, in its same location so next up is I picked up some aluminum tube and I got this bright ass light over here to help me see but picked up this aluminum tube from my local metal supply shop and I think it's gonna work out great initially I wanted something a little bit thinner to like save on weight but the more that I think about it since it is gonna be underneath the car uh, it's probably best that it's thicker that way if it ever does get bumped underneath the car and gets dented um, you know this stuff's pretty pretty beefy so um, hopefully it won't puncture it so I'm going to weld some of the fittings on there I'm still waiting on some fittings from Amazon unfortunately so uh, I'm gonna do what I can and I'm gonna try to weld these two together and then figure out a mounting location underneath the car um, but yeah it's coming along nicely 
Um, still need to get a metal sheet um, that's going to go over this, an aluminum sheet. And then uh, I'm going to put some like intercooler ducting and then like I said, Lexan windows. Um, and I got the fan installed underneath there. Pretty sick setup, honestly. Really glad that I got away from mounting it on the, uh, on the roll cage. I think it's just gonna come out so much better. got the brackets on these hard lines so these will mount underneath the car and uh, I did these off of a standard uh, 110 120 outlet and I did that for two reasons I do have obviously this is a 220 uh, machine but one I was being lazy and I didn't feel like hooking my stuff up over at that outlet focus and two I wanted to show you guys that stuff like this is possible off of 110. Yeah, you're not gonna get the best penetration, but if you kinda know what you're doing, um, you can weave it back and forth, and these things aren't going anywhere. I wouldn't do this on like a critical application, but most stuff with the race car or you know cars is not critical. Um, even these AN fittings, I probably wouldn't have used much more amperage than what I, what I had at hand. Um, I felt like I actually did get pretty decent penetration on those, um, and they're not going to leak, guaranteed. So with that, only doing it off of uh, 110, I just wanted to show you guys that uh, you can pick up a cheap machine and do stuff like this on your own. Um, I actually encourage everybody to go out and buy a TIG welder. They're getting super affordable now, especially if you're into uh, autom automotive-related fabrication or welding or you just want to get into it. Um, now now's the time like all these all these chinese machines are getting super good and honestly i would not spend the money on something like a lincoln or a miller nowadays and uh you know if you want it go out and get it you know like i didn't just pick up a tig torch and start laying perfect welds um i still don't but i'm good enough now to where i can get stuff done on my own car and it's super rewarding. I don't have to pay some fabricator an outrageous amount of money, and uh, you guys should definitely do it. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I know it was kind of a step backwards, but uh, it's progressing nicely now, and I think that I'm just gonna be that much more happy with the end product, and uh, can't wait to get more done on the car. Unfortunately, I gotta wait for some more parts, but I uh, should be here in the next few days, and we will knock it out. So I'll catch you in the next one.